What's up everyone, my name is George and in this video I want to share with you my very first impressions after a few nights of imaging using a newly released monochrome camera SV Boni SV605MC. In this video I will share some specifications of this camera, will cover some pros and cons that I've noticed after a few nights of using this camera and of course I will share some single exposures, dark frames and final images that I have. So without further ado, let's begin. The SV Boni SV605MC comes equipped with a 1 inch monochrome IMX533 CMOS sensor that has an image resolution of 3008 by 3008 pixels and 3.76 micrometer pixel size. The camera works at a 14 bit depth that results in a better dynamic range, and the sensor offers good values of quantum efficiency and low amount of noise on your images. As you can expect now from any dedicated for deep sky photography camera, SV605MC features the cooling system that allows to reduce the temperature of the sensor to 30 degrees Celsius below the ambient temperature, and that results in a lower amount of noise that you get in your images, especially if you get long exposure pictures like 60 seconds or longer. Alright guys, so let's start the most, I think, important part of this video, which basically looking at single exposures that you can get using SV605MC camera. I was imaging for four nights straight from June 15th to June 18th. During this time I captured two targets. The first one was NGC 6888 that is also known as the Crescent Nebula that's located in the constellation Cygnus. And there are some examples of single exposures that I got. First three nights I spent capturing the Crescent Nebula through narrowband filters. And my latest imaging night I spent capturing the Cygnus Wall, the emission nebula that is the part of the larger North American Nebula that is also known as NGC 7000. I will let you decide whether these images look good or not. What I like about these pictures is that I got some nice details through low-level narrow band filters. The stars are sharp and overall details in these images look good. However, they all have a noticeable problem that you might see as well. I'm talking about bending that appears as horizontal lines of noise on these images. As SV Boni says on their website, they are aware of this problem, and they are working with the development engineers to solve it. By the way, the gear that I used includes Skywatcher 150 PTS, which is a 6-inch Newton Reflector Telescope, uh, the main imaging camera of course, SV605MC, with attached filter wheel that has 7 filters, uh, there are LRGB filters and uh, narrowband filters with 7nm band pass from ZWO. Uh, of course I used guiding, I had 50mm guide scope from Orion and the guide camera was SV305 and the whole setup was mounted on my Skywatcher Eco 6 of Pro mount. Now we're looking at some examples of dark frames that I captured at different exposure times. Fortunately, these calibration frames worked out pretty well for my light frames. Here is a 5 minute exposure of the Cygnus wall taken through hydrogen alpha filter. And here is a stack of 24 frames that were calibrated by darks and bias frames. As you can see, the bending issue almost disappeared on the stacked image. So yeah, those how single exposures and stacked images look like. Also what I'm planning to do is to think up, I'm going to upload all these frames that I just showed you on in a separate folder on the Google Drive. And I will put a link to these files in the description down below so you can check these images out yourself. And if you have any questions, just drop me a comment in the comment section down below. All right, so let's discuss the pros and cons that I've discovered after like four nights of imaging. And the first benefit of this camera is the price. So this camera comes at 799 US dollars on sale right now, and the original price should be 899 dollars. And this option is more cost effective compared to different options like uh, ZWO533MM or QHY533M. So basically for the lower price you get exactly the same IMX533 sensor that has a lot of benefits and features such as uh, high quantum efficiency, low readout noise, the lack of amp glow, the 14-bit ADS and etc. So the second feature that I noticed is that this camera comes with a power adapter. I'm going to show it to you just in a second. So just a power adapter for the cooling system. 
And normally if you get uh, like a ZWO camera, you do not get this power adapter in the box and you have to purchase it separately, which is crucial in order to run the cooling system or the camera itself. Basically what Svboni does, they provide you with everything you need to get up and running. Talking about disadvantages, so far I've noticed two main disadvantages in this camera. The main flaw that I noticed is the bending in this camera that appears as like the horizontal lines of noise. Second disadvantage is optional and uh, as you can see this camera on the back it does not have additional USB ports that for example you have in ZWO cameras. So let me show it to you. This is my ZWO 2600 MC Pro camera and as you can see on the back it has of course the power adapter, the USB adapter and it has additional two USB ports on the back that you can use to connect additional devices such as the filter wheel for example. And if we talk about a monochrome camera, you're definitely gonna need a filter wheel with all the possible filters like LRGB or SHO filters. And if you use a filter wheel and this camera, you won't be able to connect the filter wheel to the camera itself, so you gotta do it either to a mini PC or USB hub. And I said that this disadvantage is optional because for me, for example, it is not an issue as I have a 7 USB port hub that I use to connect different devices and uh, let's say I don't have USB ports here on the camera, I still have plenty of room on my setup to connect a filter wheel or like rotator if I want to get one in the future. But it might be an issue for those who do not have extra additional USB ports on their imaging rig. But even though this camera has some disadvantages, overall my first impressions about this camera are positive. SV605MC is a good option for those who just want to try themselves in monochrome deep sky astrophotography and see whether you like this part of astrophotography or not. At least this was one of the reasons I decided to get this camera, just to try myself in narrowband imaging, in monochrome imaging, see if I like it or not. So I'm definitely planning to spend more nights capturing different deep sky objects using this monochrome camera. Uh, this was only like first impressions video about the camera. And if you have any questions or there is something you want specifically to know more about this camera, just drop me a comment down below and I'd be happy to reply on it. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to support my channel. I will leave you at the final image that I got using this monochrome SV605MC camera. Clear skies to you all and until next time.